very well yesterday. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if he's going to be coming back today, but I wasn't necessarily against him doing that, right? Because yesterday he did step up to the plate. Yeah, he really did. Yeah, he brought, uh, I mentioned yesterday, he brought more aggression than what we normally see out of Chicken 1, 2, 3, and I think that really plays into the style that Hammers need to use and utilize to pick up victories. So I have absolutely no problems with Max Green uh, stepping up to the plate once again, and it has nothing to do with our Twitter conversations. <laughs> Dude, uh, we saw uh, Fortress twice out of Hammers yesterday, mm -hmm. or just one? Twice. Twice? We said, I mean, it makes sense, right? Yeah, they that, need something like they, that. Like, with starting on your team, uh, with T-Tigers on your team, I I would just, if I could draft for them, whatever it is, is just run at you. But here's the problem. Team Solomit are the gods of draft. I mean, Flash yeah. X, everyone knows how they're going to know that. They're probably, I would not be at all surprised to see TSM ban away the Fortress from them. Well, Hammers Esports are up first on A's side, so they're going to have a chance to set what's going on here. If they ban away Lyra and Team Solomid say, hey, no Fortress, Hammers gets an Adagio. So, TSM, do respect that pick and ban it away. Hammers, I feel like they have plenty of options here. Obviously, uh, Ringo is a very strong pick for them that uh, starting all over loves to play. It's been banned away from him multiple times. But you then have to consider possibly picking up that Fortress as a first pick because it worked so well for them. Yeah, I actually consider the Fortress maybe their first pick here. The thing is, though, if like that gets picked up, there's a good chance that by the time you get your second pick, there's not going to be a Ringo or Vox on the board. Mm -hmm. exactly. I think it's, it's likely, perhaps. And, and another problem is that it, it kind of... I don't know. I don't think it's going to be powerful enough in isolation, right? Like, you need to have something that... Starting all over can run away on. That's the whole point of picking up the fortress. Yeah, I mean, you also have the Gwen, which we've talked about. People going away from. He could he could pull that Gwen out. I'm not sure about his Baron so much. Mm. Something I should check up on. On the plus side, it does obfuscate what you're doing a little bit. You know, picking a fortress first doesn't say a tremendous amount about exactly what you want to do later. It on. It also doesn't guarantee it's going in the captain role either. That's very true. Oh, that's gonna happen. I I I like the pick for them. It it was. It was so crucial to what they wanted to do yesterday. They can flex it a little yeah. bit. It's It just makes a lot of sense. If Hammers ever goes on the back foot, they just lose. I agree, to be honest. But I don't know if this is exactly what they need to stop that from happening. Team Solomid, what do you think about, like, for example, they pick Vox here, ban the Ringo, or do they pick Ringo here, ban the Vox? If they want to make sure they get one and the others don't, they have to do it in one of those two orders. I feel like Vox would be really good for them. Uh, it's really good into the Fortress, yeah. but Kashka... He's going to try and improve on that 10-0 and 0 record in North America. Fonsi's the man to do I it. mean, it's hard. Yeah, yeah. It, it is a lot of times, like, uh, even if you have the draft you want that's capable of being very offensive and running at you with a Fortress comp, it doesn't mean you're always going to do it from level one, although you mm -hmm. know a lot of teams will look for that invade. But if Kashka can stall you out for a couple minutes, it can really set you on the back foot. And they're going to go ahead and take away the Ringo. So now this kind of forces Hammer's hand a little bit. They... I feel like you almost have to ban the Vox in this situation and make sure that neither of those two are available. If you do, I feel like TSM could go Gwen here. I, mean, I, I think that's the play. I think I that think, literally yeah. is what... That, yeah, Flash probably thought this out. Yeah, I, I would assume that's exactly what they're looking for is for the, the Vox to get banned here. They pick up Gwen and then leave Hammers with you know having to dip even deeper into the weapon power lane pool. All right, well, Hammers have got 40 seconds of bonus time remaining, and they're using a lot of it on this second Probably ban. Probably ban the Lance. Sorry Not the Vox? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think let them both through. Yeah, I feel like you, if you if you ban the Vox, they get Gwen. I feel like it just puts, sets you so far back in the lane. Do they pick Gwen in this next pick, though, or do they pick Lance? Ah, well, it's, it's probably Vox here then, right? I would assume so. Or Gwen, I suppose, if you want a Gwen. No, no, it, there, it was... <laughs> Almost certainly going to be the Vox. I think, again, Flash X, Team Solo Mid, they, drafting is one of the things that they've always been known for. And I feel like that played exactly out the way that they were figuring. The Tigers didn't play on the Fortress, right? It was, it was Max Green both games. Both but games. we know T-Tigers can play this Fortress. Yeah. Mm. Hammers, I mean, they're, they're running out of time. Flash X is putting them in a the corner here in the draft. Hammers really got to do like something. Glaive going to be the pick. Yeah. The, the Glaive comes out here, most likely we see the Utility Glaive come through, which means the Koshka definitely has a little bit of a power spike in the early game. This compared. would be a really good time for starting all over to just shake things up, pull out a Celeste in the lane, weapon power Glaive in the jungle. I have to breathe a sigh of relief there. 
Oh, it's gonna be the sky. Okay, starting all over. I've re I remember his sky from back in the day. Pretty strong stuff. Yeah. You gotta point at me when you say it. I'm just indicating no, I'm just that kidding. you guys should talk. You know what? <laughs> Honestly, this guy has not been in the forefront of my mind enough. I don't think she's strong enough compared to the other top mm -hmm. laners. But she, well, maybe not strong enough. Not she is strong enough, but not as strong as the other top laners right now. She can have an impact. I mean, Zio starting. They're definitely players that favor this pick. Yeah, and we'll see if uh, starting could. I I just don't want to see the same build as Zeal had last game. Yeah, I, I really hope he doesn't do the tyrant. No, oh, oh yes. man, flickers one of the one of the three picks that does not have a loss in all of Vainglory eight thus far. And TSM had run this last week mm -hmm. for sure because that was in the highlight video. They did a really good job about that. I think one of the other things is TSM was super smart about clearing out vision across the map before engaging. Like they were constantly doing like these recon missions just to clear scout traps. They'd back up and then regoose with the ult. So I feel like f the flicker pick here with that Kashka backing up Vox is kind of saying, hey, you want to fight us early? It's still risky for you. Like we've got power early. I don't think it's necessarily that hammers need to fight early. It's just that once they start fighting, they need to never let off the gas. I just, I love that hammers obviously picked up a, a composition that's very aggressive, but Team Solo Mid just says, "All right, we're just gonna double down on this." Both of these compositions are so aggressive, are just run at you, and just tr clash straight up in an all-out team fight. That's what we're gonna be seeing constantly. It should be exciting. Yeah, this is. this comp is exactly what we talked about yesterday as kind of the Hammers comp we wanted to see. It worked well for them yesterday, but they're against TSM right now. This is the team who won week one, who came second at Worlds. They're arguably, on some of their better online performance at least, form that we've seen. Mm -hmm. This Can is not Hammers necessarily the comp I want to see for Hammers. I mean, it has okay. a lot of the flavor that I'd like to see, but I don't like to see T-Tigers on a utility-based pick. Mm. And that's what we're going to see out of this Glaive most likely. So this is like the budget version of the orange soda instead of one of the brand names. Not it's not quite where you want to go. It's not just a, like a cream oh, okay. soda, and someone's like, "This <laughs> is like basically an orange soda," and you're like, "It's soda." <laughs> <laughs> All right, predictions for game number one before we hop in. I think this is going to going to go to TSM. Uh, it's very similar ideas, but I just feel like TSM is going to be able to just play better as an as a whole. All right, well, let's find out who's going to be moving forward to the finals to face Gangstars. Is it going to be Team Solo Mid or Hammers heading on to the Halcyon Fold with Four Court Jester and Jaws? Oh, boy, we're back again. And uh, strong words from the desk. Everybody thinking that TSM can take the victory here. But what do you think, Four Court? And maybe not just yet, because starting all over is getting into a bit of action already. Flash X going really low on the flicker. Oh my goodness, this could be first blood already. And it is. There we go. First blood going over already to Hammers. TSM in a lot of trouble there. Best Chuck Hane gets jumped on as well. What is happening already? Maybe the desk was completely wrong because Hammers start this game out with a 2-0. It's a fantastic start as the Hammers are able to just kind of deflect the flicker pressure. Like he really kind of took the route to get there using the invisibility in order to get that gank off but uh vox i mean level one has no damage built up he only has that attack speed and didn't work out whatsoever i mean starting all over with those forward barrages like that's that's gonna win hands down in some of these uh, small tight confined areas yeah it would indeed and you saw him just rip through the likes of tsm a second ago and that's exactly what they did do two kills already and it's both of them are on starting all over as well. That's that. That's the annoying start. thing I think for TSM. It is a very good. It's a very good start for starting all over. Indeed. Now they talked make a, a joke into that somehow. <laughs> I could. <but laughs> um, they talked a little bit about Max Green coming in, right? Like the sub Chicken One Two Three, obviously not here today. But a big thing uh, that actually helped out a little bit of that burst early on is the Dragon Blood contract that Max Green is rocking. He not only has the Iron Guard, but the Dragon Blood, and that goes a long way, especially level one fights, because uh, that extra damage is uh, really contributed to the 2-0 for starting over. Oh boy, it's TSM 1, a little bit of revenge here. Vonsi is going to jump in, however, it's really just not going to be all too effective. And there's uh, Max Green's just going to be able to get away, no problemo. However, Flash X, we've seen him on his flick of play before, and he does do an absolutely fantastic job. And you can see him here just stealthing around in the bushes, no problems. That little fuzzy bit of purple mist 
But other than that, I mean, not really had an impact in this early game at all. I mean, Max Green, we're seeing this Fortress yet again. It's uh, just a reoccurring theme with some of these teams to pick up Fortress, even in the captain or the jungle role. Yeah, the jungle role kind of uh, works out like the Glaive. We've been seeing a very similar build. You, know, you pick up into the cooldown reduction. You got that Storm Crown, the Aftershock, and then go a little bit more tanky from there. On the Fortress, it actually works out very well because it synergizes nicely with uh, the puppies, right? That cooldown goes down to something like 25, 35 seconds, somewhere in that range. Uh, and that that's a lot of attack of the pack that you get to spam out. Now, on the uh, a bit more of the defense role on this captain role, still works out actually really well using the ult a little bit more strategically. You don't quite use it on cooldown, but that scouting information can be all the difference for starting over to find the angle he needs. Well, there's the angle. They come in. However, T Tigers is going to be here as well, but not before starting all over goes down. Max Green as well with the bolts come through from Bestia Kane. Those auto attacks following for absolute miles, and that's a double kill. So already TSM just pulling this one back. I thought T Tigers had that one, man, but he just could not get there in time. Bonsi, triple crystal bit. You know, Best Chuck had already built into some good weapon there, and Flash. Basically got uh, the big route that he needed to. I mean, the fairy dust is very hard to, to really defeat, especially early on when you don't have a lot of uh, anything. Oh, he nearly stole it from Tigers there. Uh, but that's also something that Max Green's going to have to take care of. You know, once he finishes into this fountain, it's, it's got to be a flare gun. There has to be a flare gun somewhere in the early game here. It does indeed. And we'll have to see when they want to actually pick that one up. Because at the moment, Max Green, you know, he's sitting with four flares in his uh, in his little backpack or wherever you store them on fortress and uh, that will mean he's able <laughs> to easily point. spot our flash x <laughs> what was that that's a good point not entirely oh yeah yeah where does he them. store it man does he have like a little uh well they'd get burnt up anyway the guy's made a fire at this point bonzi is going to jump in starting all over starting all over needs to at least goes back to the base bonzi picks up a double kill tsm they're putting uh the pedal to the metal as uh, t tigers is just gonna have to back off here as uh, hammers not doing so hot now after getting those first couple of kills. No, oh, Flash is actually tanking this up right now. T Tiger oh, Flash. might be able to grab a kill. Flash? Oh! Oh, so close. oh my god, that was close. Fountain Didn't quite just happen. in time. The savior of that one. I mean, Tigers only has a crown at this point. He has a crown in the crystal bit, so I mean, the Aftershock, sure, it's somewhere down the line, but he's, he's going to be more adept at clearing out objectives rather than the kills. Flash not dying is a pretty tremendous boon for TSM because they pick up the kills, they pick up the turret, and it's all for free for them. God damn, that was completely free. Two double kills come through. One for best chuck and then one for one C. It's like they it's like they planned the whole thing out perfectly. It's splitting the resources and taking the turret as well. Five minutes. That's one of the that's a very quick turret. And I want to say that's one of the quickest we've seen um coming out from uh, NA at least. We haven't seen a ton of push comp, that is for sure. I mean, Saw has had a, a handful of games, mostly in EU, maybe exclusively in EU, but even then, like, the, the push comps are few and far between right now. It's just not meta. Not meta. Well, there you go. That's the end of that. Not meta at all. But TSM looking like they're running a push comp right now with that turret going down so, so quickly. Flash X doesn't have Moon Cloak just yet. So he's not going to be able to make any plays across the map here. Uh, Vonsi does obviously have Yummy Catnip Frenzy. However, they're going to get spotted out very quickly. And uh, yeah, like you mentioned, they are uh, going to have to invest in some early, Ooh. early vision. As, uh, whoa, hang on a minute. T-Tigers does face check that brush. Does manage to afterburn Vonsi away. And Wormy Flash X is going to get aggressed on as well. Vonsi just jumping back in. No real care in the world. He's going to ult as well. But he just goes down underneath his own turret. A bit of an overstep here. Best Chuck and he's going to get aggressed on as well. Double kill coming through for T Tigers. It's going to be really nice for him in the back pocket there. Flash X is going to have to run away. I'm not sure he's going to be able to survive. However, very, very tanky at this point. T Tigers is trying to get in here as well. Will he be able to go down, Max? Oh my goodness. Takes the last turret hit. Ends up going down. Training the kill. But. Tigers ends up picking up that one. So 3 0 on this time, and that mine almost killed him as well. Almost had a heart attack. Oh man, what? if T Tigers actually died to the scout trap, would have been a fantastic cleanup there uh, from Flash X. Would have gotten the double. But the fairy dust there at the end does pick up Max Green. So at least again, he got something in return for that. But that was just TSM being a little bit too brazen. I mean, that was very brave. Avanci to uh, get starting over like that. I'm not entirely too sure that was the target. Starting over was 
very healthy, especially under that turret. You saw how quickly Vonsi evaporated, and he doesn't have a ton in the bank. He has big burst damage past that. Yeah, he, he kind of does need to dance away. Being stuck under that turret was a death sentence. So back and forth, back and forth. TSM, you know, a bit of a rocky start, a little bit of a rocky fight. Overall, they are still maintaining pressure. You can see him pushing up lane, and at the same time, they're up 2,000 gold. So I don't think they're out of this yet. No, definitely not. And obviously, they do have their tier one turret available to them as well to fall back to. 10 kills across the board right now in seven minutes. A very, very aggressive game coming out from both of these teams. And TSM just looking at the forefront right now. Moon oh. oh dear. Moon Bloke coming in. How the best Chukane has been spotted. Attack at the back as well. He's going to go. Starting all over. Starts all over again. Best Chukane is going to have to kite back now as Mactreen is on his case. T Tigers as well is just in the middle of all of them. Yummy Cat in Frenzy over the wall. No problem for Von C. He says, see you later and see you back at the base. T Tigers is going to go down and TSM with the upper hand once more. Really good, uh, really kind of fantastic engage right there from Flash X. The Moon Cloak, they really did use it out. Best Chuck stepping on top of that trap did ruin a little bit of the surprise, but uh, the damage was basically done at that point. They were already all over, starting all over, and you saw them just absolutely melt from there. Max Green did survive. There's not going to be an ace here for TSM, but, you know, kill for, for a kill for a kill. Now back and forth. Now finally, you know, a gold mine to go down here on top of things as well. So TSM taking back control, taking back the momentum. Can't do that for a, a while. Yeah, it's a pretty hefty cooldown to get that moon cloak out. But Von C, you know, is he actually going to build more into the offense or are we going to be looking just to blow Ooh. someone up? And it's going to be a blow up comp. Like that's what all they're going to do. Rinse, repeat, blow up, starting over, win the 2v3. They don't have to really worry about sustain. That's the angle they're going for. Yeah, with the broken myth, you definitely be able to blow up Von C quicker than he can react. I mean, I'm not entirely sure if I've seen any death from above as actually land. Um, I could just be blind or just the team fights are so quick and uh, that TSM just kind of take control. Like you said, they blow up one person and just kind of run away and then 2v3, realistically, they are just going to be able to push forward from there. Moon Cloak not available just yet. 20 seconds on the clock, but Yummy Candy Frenzy obviously from Von C is available. See if TSM are going to push onto this turret. Like you said, gold mine has gone down as well. So not really too much they can take right now, apart from the entirety of Hammer's jungle. And uh, that's, I think that's what they're going to do. Well, that's that's a little bit more the better better way to go. I mean, picking up the sentry that started ticking down his lives. Vonsi is going to get these bags, no problem. If anybody comes down here, they're just going to face check right into all of TSM. And there's always the stealth component that you got to be aware of, right? We do not have... Uh, really any kind of anti-vision other than just the scout traps like yes max green has these flares but there's no flare gun to go with it right no start of a contraption and that's because it really you know, hammers are feeling a little cornered a little forced at this point if he diverts the funds away from you know that crucible then he wouldn't have it right now and that's that's a pretty big boon because there's a lot to block coming out from best chuck and von c it is indeed, and with that, Moonwalk is available. We'll see if he wants to pop it. Starting all over is very far up here. Same with Max Green. They're all around. They know something could happen at any time. Flash X is going to stealth in. They're going to jump straight on to Ridiculous. starting all over. There comes the death from above, but doesn't do anything whatsoever. Max Green is going to fall as well. Von C, he built right, I think, here. And uh, with that broken myth, just absolutely obliterates Hammers. They will trade two kills there for zero, and T-Tiger's the only member left. That will mean TSM going to push onto this turret. T-Tiger's giving an escort there to the sentry, but yeah, he's not going to be able to put up a defense right here. T-Tiger's will get spotted out, but I mean, he's cool down at this point. His full utility is in play. Needs to, I mean, I, I feel like an Atlas would actually be really good for T-Tiger's. I might not want to see it on max screen. I might actually put it there on top of T-Tiger's just so he can get into that back. But if he goes offensive with that uh, Atlas, then starting all over has lost a very important peel aspect from T-Tigers. And honestly, I'm not entirely too sure that's a bad thing because starting is not living through these fights anyways, Jones. <laughs> He's not at all. Like I said, uh, Death and Rough did come down, but didn't really do much whatsoever because he was dead by the time it did actually anything at all. Starting all over, not having a good game. But TSM, you could just say that they're picking their target perfectly. And guess what they still have? They still have the Moonclope. So they can use that for the engage next time around. And you can see already Flash X getting a little bit of vision down as well. T-Tiger's uh, just kind of fending off his jungle, but it's not going too well. TSM just uh, pushing forward and pushing ever upwards. 
And their gold lead is uh, reflecting that perfectly. 6k in the lead. It will be a little bit more as well. Gold miner is going to go down. And uh, you can see here, Hammer's just trying to get on it. I'm not sure they're actually going to be able to see yep. the attack of the back coming yep. through as well. It does go over. Who will it go to? It does go over to TSM. And then she's going to jump straight again on starting all over. He does go down. But Vonti is traded as well. Max Green is going to have to run away. Best Chakane is going to have no problems chasing him down. It's going to be a two for one yet again with TSM coming up trumps. All right, definitely a better engage from Hammers. They didn't have starting, you know, evaporate immediately. They were able to get that kill. That gold miner lived for so long after the engage. Just was waiting for somebody to sneeze on him to claim the gold. It ends up being Flash X with the fairy dust when he activated it. So, all right. I mean, even with some of those advantages, we had some infusions there as well. TSM still able to get the better trades. This game is certainly starting to look pretty dire here from Hammers. Looking very, very dire right now. If they can pull anything back here, obviously, being uh, the gold deficit they are and starting all over, not doing so hot. He's got a couple of kills in his back pocket, but still the damage coming out from Vonsi is absolutely ludicrous. He hasn't got the Atlas Pauldrons now as well. But with that broken myth, man, he's just doing so much work. And he stays alive for so long as well because there's no real damage that can be followed up with from, uh, from the likes of Hammers as soon as starting all over goes down. Well, Vonsi is also built into the Atlas. He's he's doing the same thing that I tried to explain for T-Tigers, right? You get into the back line, you hit that Atlas, and all of a sudden your weapon carries. If they don't get it reflex blocked, then it's going to be a problem because that delay in auto attacks really do hurt out the damage output. So starting a Wolver, he's getting hit by it pretty consistently. Best Chuck and A is going to be the target once T-Tigers, oh, he has his ready to go there as well. So yeah, you get, you get that damage reduction, your survivability goes up. Von C, though, has nothing really to stop T-Tigers, and that's what actually killed him. T-Tigers burst with the aftershock, uh, the afterburn on top of the uh, crown. Yeah, nothing to stop that. Yeah, nothing to stop this either. Moonclug is going to come in from TSM. Oh, that was close. Hammers knew something was amiss there, because they saw nobody from TSM through the vision. They do manage to avoid that tiny, tiny gank that TSM tried to pull off. Sentry is going to go down. Attack of the pack is going to be the response for Hammers. T-Tigers is actually just going to run straight at them. But Sign all over finally just not really touched in this one. There comes Death from above. He's going to hit two people, but he's still alive. This is the main thing you have to look for. But the rest of his team are. That's going to be the problem. And here we're going to go down in the air. Ace coming through for TSM. And I thought it might just be a win for Hammers there. But they decide we don't need to kill this guy over again. We'll just kill the rest of his team around him. It's so hard to get any kind of kills here. I mean, we don't have the biggest amount of shield, but you don't need it because T-Tigers' burst is very predictable. It's all about this armor. We have armor on everybody. Flash X, Tier 3. Von C, Tier 3. Best Chuck. Not only does he have three offensive items, but a Tier 3 armor to go with it. It is extremely hard to kill out TSM right now. And once you engage, you have to commit. You can't run away after that point. You're going to have Binding Lights, Fairy Dust. Von C is going to be chasing you down with his mobility. And you saw the yummy catnip frenzy, like held to the end there, just to take down starting. It's it's very do or die, and unfortunately for hammers, their comp is just not doing the damage, so they die. Yeah, exactly that. They do no damage, therefore they are kill. Well, Bracken is on the field here for courts, and that will mean it is just going to stomp its way down the lane, and with all those turrets kind of laying in ruin. They've only got two turrets between them and the victory right now. This is a best of three. However, remember, you've got to keep that in your mind. Everything can change in this second game. I mean, our Hammer's just looking to the same game right now because TSM, they're looking at the short fire victory here. <laughs> well, it's, it's, yeah, I'd go with that, Jaws. Simple. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Death from above. Does absolutely nothing. Moonclo in, however, starting all over getting jumped on once more. Almost goes down. The fountain does heal him. He's going to go in the base for the regen as well. Flash X is doing a lot of work in the front line here, but Vonti is going to keep your eye Whoa. on him. He goes down eventually, though. Does manage to take two people with him. Best Chuck and A, Flash X and Al Best Chuck and A and Flash X alive. They're going on the turret. Starting all over, just completely ignored almost. Almost falls. There we go. They finally take the kill. They take the ace. They take the turrets. And they take the win. TSM with a very, very convincing game number one. Now, Flash X, Mooncloak's in. No problem. Atlas, you're kind of just done from there starting. He might be able to reposition, but we have a Shiver Steel on top of that. And, like, even if you know that you're being charged by the Mooncloak, the fact that you can't, you know, tap on them, you can't really see them you know they're there but you can't really hit anything with them unless you have a ground targeted ability or a skill shot or something 
that goes a long way. So, you know, starting over, he can he doesn't get a target lock. So he can't story strike away from anything until he gets engaged upon. And it's almost always too late from there. Sky puts up another loss here in NA Jaws. And we, I don't know what's going to be the catalyst to make it kind of great again. But uh, it's, it's looking pretty dire for any team that takes Sky right now. Exactly that. And do you think they're going to change it up? I mean, they must do. They, they must know the stats on this Sky pick. We do, and it's not looking so hot. However... We'll see what AJ and the guys think about that one because TSM just kind of ran over Hammers there. We'll see if they can bring it back in game two. Me and Fulcourt, we'll see you in a bit. AJ and the boys, take it away. Thank you very much. You know, I actually, uh, I was asking Bacon about replays before we hopped back on desk. I was like, <laughs> do, do you want anything? You know, should we grab something? He was like, draft. That, that was, was brutal. Was